Ed and Lorraine Warren have been involved in many famous paranormal cases throughout the years, many of which have since been adapted into hugely successful movies such as The Conjuring, The Nun and of course Annabelle. Now whether you believe Ed and Lorraine Warren or think that they are frauds who tricked the public, they certainly had very interesting stories that we need to take a closer look at. These are the top 5 scary demon cases investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren part 2. Let's jump in. Coming in at number 5 we have the White Lady of Easton. Located in Easton, Connecticut, Union Cemetery is a site that dates back to the 1700s. And according to ghost hunters and paranormal investigators, it is one of the most haunted cemeteries in all of the United States. Now according to local legend, a ghost haunts Union Cemetery who has been dubbed the White Lady. She's also said to haunt Stepney Cemetery in Monroe as well. She is described as wearing a white nightgown or a wedding dress-esque outfit. With demonologist Ed Warren once claiming to have physical evidence to support these claims. Now, claims of paranormal occurrences at the cemetery had been occurring for decades prior to Ed and Lorraine Warren investigating the location. Ed Warren and several Eastern police officers visited the site, which is when Ed supposedly caught the apparition on camera. Ed claimed that several ghost lights came together to form the shape of a woman who had no facial features, but had dark hair and was wearing a white dress. Terrifying. Now, there isn't a whole lot of information about the ghost or the cemetery. However, Ed and Lorraine Warren wrote a book about the location entitled Graveyard. Maybe check it out. You do you. Before we jump into number four, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps out a lot. Coming in at number four, we have the South End Werewolf. Apparently, a lot of demonic activity occurs in Essex, with this being one of two to appear on our list. Born and raised in South End in Essex in the United Kingdom, Bill Ramsey began to experience trouble at the young age of nine years old. He was outside one day when he began to feel a little strange. An icy blast swept over him, and a foul stench appeared, causing him to almost vomit. Anger began to take hold, and the young boy uprooted a fence post, swinging it around like a club with the fence still attached. It was stated that not even his parents were able to remove the post with their hands. Bill Ramsey then placed the wire meshing of the fence into his mouth and began to chew on it, terrifying his parents in the process, who supposedly ran into their home for safety. Following the incident, things settled, with nothing occurring for 15 years. Bill Ramsey grew up, got married, and became a father of three. However, during this time, he was plagued by nightmares, waking up in a cold sweat and feeling dread and unease. Once again, another 15 years passed with no repeat occurrences of what happened when he was a young boy. That was until 1983 when Bill was out at a pub with a few of his friends. After having a few drinks, he began to feel that same chill he experienced when he was young. He went to the bathroom, looked in the mirror, and looking back at him was a werewolf. He hopped in a car with a few friends heading home, however he began to growl with his hands twisting into claws, and proceeded to try to bite his friends leg. After a handful of incidents that would follow this one, Bill was taken to a psychiatric hospital, with doctors being unable to explain his condition. Bill ultimately travelled to the states to meet Ed and Lorraine Warren, where a priest performed an exorcism on Bill, which supposedly cured him. But not before he partially transformed into a werewolf in front of witnesses. Coming in at number 3 we have the Borley Church Haunting. The Borley Rectory was a home located in Essex, England that gained widespread attention after being dubbed the most haunted home in England, with it being described as such by Harry Price, a psychic researcher. According to reports, the rectory itself has been haunted since it was built, with sudden reports being filed in 1929 after the Daily Mirror published an article detailing the account of a visit by paranormal researcher Harry Price. Now, the first major paranormal event occurred on July 28, 1900, after four daughters of the rector, Henry Dawson Ellis Bull, reported seeing the ghost of a nun not far from their house. However, when they tried to approach, the ghost disappeared. Other people throughout the years complained of similar sightings, including phantom coaches driven by headless horsemen. Freaky. However, let's take a look at the church. The hauntings date back even prior to these occurrences, with folklore claiming that the first haunting occurred in the 14th century following the execution of a nun who had an affair with a monk. The Warrens ended up travelling to Essex to investigate the claims of paranormal activity at the rectory, with people reporting ghostly chanting and organ music, along with sightings of the executed nun and of a ghostly monk. Prior to his death, Ed Warren even claimed to have captured a picture of the ghost monk, showing him leafing through a book inside of the church. Borley Church ultimately served as the inspiration for the movie The Nun, which sadly was a major letdown. Also, mostly fiction? Coming in at number two, we have the Lindley Street Haunting. Lorraine and I were in that house for almost three days and nights. We watched as furniture moved around, smashed, broke, 
People came in and witnessed this, firemen, priests. The home located at 966 Lindley Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut is a truly fascinating story, being dubbed the most haunted house in America, with the Warrens referring to it as, I quote, the most important poltergeist case of the last 100 years. The home belonged to Gerald and Laura Goodwin, who lived there along with their adopted daughter Marsha. According to reports, several people claimed to see furniture moving on its own accord and a crucifix flying off the wall. For those who know the case, you'll know that one of the key elements to the story is the report that the family family cat could speak, with claims surfacing that Sam the cat was caught singing Christmas carols in the family's basement. Now at some point in time, Marsha confessed that the entire thing was a hoax and that she was responsible for the events that occurred. However, the Warrens weren't having any of it, with Ed and Lorraine believing no child was capable of being behind the incidents they witnessed firsthand. Whether you believe it or not, the case is certainly an interesting one that has divided many. I mean, when the Warrens are involved, you know there is going to be some criticism. Also, how do you explain a talking cat? Like if its mouth's opening, it's talking. You know? And finally, coming in at number one, we have Satan's Harvest. Now, many will be familiar with the name Maurice Theriot, or more commonly referred to as Frenchie, thanks to the movie The Nun, with the character appearing throughout. However, I should preface this point by saying that everything that happened in The Nun with Frenchie is in fact fictional, but the character is very much based on a real person. Frenchie was the son of French Canadian farmers in Maine and grew up in a fairly toxic and abusive household, with his father exhibiting violent tendencies towards him. At the age of 51, Frenchie was living in Massachusetts with his wife Nancy and their children. To friends, he was a gentle man and extremely kind to anyone he met. However, behind closed doors housed something truly evil. He explained that his behavior was the result of being possessed by a demon, which pushed him towards violence. Blood would flow from his eyes and religious markings began to appear on his body. A local parish priest called in the help of Ed and Lorraine Warren, because of course, apparently everyone knows Ed and Lorraine. During their investigation, they saw Frenchie bleed from his eyes and saw symbols appear on his body. He also exhibited superhuman strength, which they believe was the result of demonic possession. They specifically believed that Frenchie had fallen into the grip of Satan himself. Three exorcisms were performed on Frenchie, the latter of which proved to be something truly terrifying. Frenchie's face began to change, his skin burned and blistered, and on his forehead a deep wound appeared, and his eyes began to look like snake eyes. However, the exorcism ultimately proved to be a success, with him having no incidents following. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any cases investigated by Ed and Lorraine Warren that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Perhaps we can do a part three, but I don't think we can because I think we're out of cases. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from part one of our list. Tammy said, I have the small haunting book. It's pretty scary. As for the Amityville haunting, I believe the Lutzes. Both George and Kathy Lutz never changed their story. Both have since died. Bleak ending to that statement, but yeah, they have both since died. I don't know really what they said throughout their life, but I trust, I trust. I think anyone who flees a house after 28 days, clearly they think something's gone on. I don't think it's they were trying to do anything for publicity. They really committed to it if they were. Other people, I don't trust the people that are like, oh, our home's haunted, but we'll continue living here for the rest of our life. You know? That's f Larry Saylor said, Lucy, are you in love? I found this comment really strange because you were clearly prompted by something to post this. Um, I'm in love with myself and that's it really. Don't really love anyone else. Do I? Did I say something in the video? I probably said something to imply that I loved someone. Maybe I implied that I loved the devil. I don't. We tied though. <laughs> Spywolf2077 said, two years ago she looked like a schoolgirl, but now she looks like a mother of two kids. <laughs> the savagery. The savagery. Look, COVID changed people. And it aged me. That's how I got through it, okay? I got through the pandemic by aging. Aging? By aging. I aged, okay? I'm sorry. I'm almost hitting 30. What am I supposed to do? I'm not gonna be young forever, am I? But maybe in two more years, you'll think I look young again once I've got the Botox in and the surgery done. <laughs> the YouTuber said, Lucy, you're still here. The comments in this one were rough because I got the vibe that's like, this is how I read it. Lucy, you're still here. And I think that's how you meant it. Yes, I am still here and you can't get rid of me. Even if you want me gone, I'll be here forever. Okay? Trisha W said, bloody hell, Lucy, cover your modesty. I can nearly see your dark heart. It's funny that you said that because I did look at myself. I was like, oh, what was I wearing in that video? I took a look. You couldn't even see. You could barely see a line. You can see more here. Okay? 
to back off. I don't want to cover any of my modesty. I got them. I'll flaunt them. And they're real. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And until next time, I'll see you later.